Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and academy staff. I'm David Whittem, Director of the Law Enforcement Training, and it's my distinct honor to welcome you to the graduation ceremony for the Allen Hancock College Law Enforcement Academy Class 125. Today's graduates have just completed 862 hours of intensive training in 108 days. During this time, they have been challenged mentally, physically, and emotionally. They've overcome every obstacle and have passed every test and not only survived, but excelled. And now, if everyone would kindly stand and direct your attention to your right to welcome the Class 125 graduates. Please remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the San Luis Obispo Sheriff's and Regional Honor Guard and the national anthem sung by Officer Jordan Aris and the invocation presented by Deputy Dylan Smiley. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight Oh, the ramparts we washed Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night 
that our flag was still there. Oh, oh say does that star spangled banner yeah, wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave At this time, I'm asking you all to bow your heads in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, please watch over us as we enter our communities to protect and serve. Guide us to serve with honor, integrity, and discipline. Stand with us and let us be courageous as we face evil. Lord, let us not forget that for what we stand. We stand for truth, peace, righteousness, and justice. We possess the faith that only you give the faith that reminds us that you are by our side. You have given us law enforcement as a profession, keepers of the peace and protectors of the weak. Let us remain true to your core values day in and day out. Lord, give us the will to remain strong and resilient mentally and physically so we can serve our communities to the best of our abilities. In God's name we pray, amen. Thank you, Officer Aris, Deputy Smiley, and thank you to the San Luis Obispo Sheriff's Honor Guard. Please be seated. As our recruits are aware, there have been a tremendous amount of preparation and energy involved in the delivery and training of Academy Class 125. The success of this academy would not be possible without the quality, dedication and professionalism of our entire public safety training staff. They each play a critical role and I thank them all for a job well done. In particular, I would like to thank Academy Coordinators Allison Martinez and Ken George, Perishable Skills Coordinator Robert Reed, Advanced Officer Training Coordinator Neil Lemaire, and our support staff, Lisa Hernandez, Derek Miller, JC Miller, Adrian Heredia, Ajane Griggs, Anna Gonzalez, Julie Rios, Danielle Rivera, Yvette Dorado, and Al Garcia. Also, I'd like to thank Lead Recruit Training Officer John Lennonhenig. He's retired from the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Office. And RTO, which is Recruit Training Officer David Woodward, who's with the San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Office. Special thanks goes out to Coast Hills Federal Credit Union for their continuing support of our public safety programs. And the many other staff members behind the scenes who we just couldn't do this without their assistance. On behalf of Allen Hancock College of Staff and Recruits, we thank all of our law enforcement chief executives and their staff for their ongoing support and commitment to our programs. I would like to recognize with here, here with us today our <clears throat> Arroyo Grande Police Department Chief Mike Martinez, Atascadero Department Interim Chief Joe Allen, Guadalupe Police Department Chief Mike Cash, is Mike here? Okay. Santa Barbara County Sheriff Bill Brown, San Luis Obispo County Sheriff Ian Parkinson. Morro Bay Police Department Chief Amy Watkins. Is it Amy? Paso Robles Police <coughs> Department Chief Damian Nord. Santa Maria Police Department Chief Mark Schneider. And you can clap. <laughs> San Luis Obispo Chief Rick Scott. <coughs> UCSB Police Department Chief Alex Yao. And I didn't see, is did Dan Dow, District Attorney from San Luis Obispo County, make it here? I'd like to recognize Dan as a great supporter of our program. Santa Barbara County District Attorney John Savernock. Chief Investigator for the Santa Barbara County District Attorney's Office, Christina Perkins. Senior Resident Agent for the FBI, Charles Kincaid. 
And from the office of Senator John Lair, we got Clint Weirich. And from Assembly Member Don Addis' office, we have uh, Andrea Kimmick. Thank you all for your support of our programs. And now it's my honor to introduce our college superintendent president, Dr. Kevin Walters, to say a few words to our graduates and the audience. Please help me welcome our president, Dr. Walters. Good morning. Uh, I want to recognize just a, a few other people quickly, uh, starting with our chairman of the board of trustees, Mr. Greg Pensa. Lompoc trustee Jeff Hall, Santa Maria trustee Hilda Zacharias, and her beautiful granddaughters, <laughs> and uh, our vice president for academic affairs, Bob Curry. Uh, this is the end of uh, a great run of about three weeks where we are in graduation season, and we started with uh, EMS graduates, fire academy graduates, uh, sheriff's custody graduates, uh, and today we end with law enforcement graduates, not to mention the more than 1,200 students who graduated with regular degrees, some of them in this class, uh, from the, the main programs at Alton Hancock College. But you're sitting on the largest investment ever made by uh, the taxpayers in the Allen Hancock College Community College District, and we're grateful for that. If you live in northern Santa Barbara County, you're helping to provide this support for our community so that we can train the best and the brightest in all of the fields of public safety and first responding. Uh, it's, it's an honor to think about what is the most important thing a community college does. And for me, that's to create public servants who are out there every day. On your worst day, if you need somebody from law enforcement, if you need a nurse, if you need an ambulance transport, if you need a firefighter, you should hope that those those people were trained here at Allen Hancock College because the training is second to none and it is the most comprehensive state-of-the-art training facility anybody could be in. For our graduates, we thank you for being willing to be the uh, people who run the wrong way when trouble happens. While the rest of us are, are trying to get out of trouble's way, you guys are running towards it. And that's a great commitment that you've made to your community and we couldn't be more proud of the efforts that you're going to make in the future. So graduates, thank you. Families, congratulations on your graduates uh, completing the program. Thank you, Dr. Walters. We couldn't do this without the support of the college, Dr. Walters and his cabinet. So thank you so much for the support for public safety. Our keynote speaker this morning for our ceremony is Ken George. He's a retiring academy coordinator and retired lieutenant for the Santa Maria Police Department. A little bit about Ken. He joined the Marines in 1976, serving in Japan and California, and was honorably discharged as a sergeant in 1980. That same year, Ken began his law enforcement career with the Fullerton Police Department, where he worked uniform patrol and as a motorcycle officer. He lateraled to the Santa Maria Police Department in 1987, where he served the next 21 years of his career with that department. He's worked a variety of assignments, including patrol, training sergeant, narcotic sergeant. As a lieutenant, he served as a watch commander and was also assigned to the Hancock College his last four years as our chief of police. Ken served on the board of directors for the Law Enforcement Torch Run, benefit that which benefits Special Olympics. And he was a member of the final leg of the Torch Run team in 1995 for the World Games in Connecticut and the final leg of the Torch Run team in, in 2006 for the National Games in Ames, Iowa. Ken was hired as adjunct faculty at Hancock College in April of 1989 and then as a full-time faculty in 2015 uh, when he served since then as our academy coordinator. He earned his Bachelor's of Arts degree in management from the University of Redlands. Please help me welcome Coordinator Ken George. Only three pages is my speech. The rest of it's the rest of the notes, so don't panic. I promise the president it's four and a half minutes. Uh, today we honor Class 125, and I can say, so I will, that this has been my best class. God's been good. Thank you. And we celebrate this transition from recruit to officers and deputies. I'm going to talk to you folks over here. 
But I want to talk to you today about career survival, okay? Because I want you to finish strong. During your career, you'll be challenged in many ways. You'll be asked to do things you never thought you could do. But I want to go back a few years and look at a young man named David, a shepherd in Israel. And he was challenged to do a great thing, and that was to battle Goliath. David's only weapon was a sling, and his ammo was a smooth stone. And if you look in the book, first book of Samuel, he chose five stones. If you think about it, why did David pick up five stones? He's only got to fight Goliath, right? Well, David knew Goliath had four brothers, all right? And so he had to prepare for them. Later on, he, they take, he takes care of them later on. But anyway, in this battle, it's just him and Goliath. Now, you may never have to fight Goliath, but you will have to fight a giant. This giant, <clears throat> this giant wants to take you out of the fight. You have to choose five stones to win this battle. And I'm gonna call this giant moral failure because studies have shown for every officer that we lose to a career ending injury, we lose 12 to moral failure, okay? So here are the five stones I recommend you guys carry in your tool bag. First, do not forget the Academy core values. Honor, duty, integrity, courage, discipline, and compassion. This will give you a firm foundation and guide you on and off the job. The giant wants you to look the other way, to lie, to cheat, but you stand fast in the battlefield. And don't forget to add in a little bit of humility and a lot of sense of humor. Your second stone is you want to stay healthy both physically and spiritually. If you remain strong in body, mind, and spirit, the giant cannot take you down. We've had chats during our lifetime fitness. We've had discussions on how to finish strong. And someday, you might be the academy coordinator or the academy director, or just maybe get the title of senior RTO. That's, where, that's your goal, right? Third, Seek a mentor and be a mentor. We've talked about the three mentors you need to have in your life. These are three men in the Bible, uh, Paul, Timothy, and Barnabas. Seek out the Paul, someone older and wiser than you, someone who will teach you. Also, uh, seek out a Timothy. When you get some time on, find somebody younger than you that you're going to train up. And finally, get that Barnabas, that peer relationship that's a mentor that has, the correct, that has the courage and the permission to correct you when you start to stray and the giant is closing in. Fourth, remain hypervigilant. That means you have to be on your guard because the giant is lurking about. Never say, it will never happen to me. When you do that, you drop your guard. Remember, it can happen to you and that is why you stay hypervigilant in all areas of your life. And finally, keep your commitments. Keep your promises to your family, your spouse, your friends, your agency, and your community. Be men and women of virtue, be dependable, and be the one walking the point. And that's it. The key to career survival, marriage survival, parental survival, and, but your time with us is finished. I wish you the best in your careers, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Ken, for those inspiring words. So class, today you graduate ready to face the many challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. You are well-trained, disciplined, educated, and physically fit. You have embraced teamwork, professionalism, and a solid work ethic. The staff and instructors have prepared you well, and it's now up to you. What you choose to become is in your hands. As charged with the law enforcement code of ethics, be an example to all, and remember the badge is a symbol of public faith. Always remember our core values. Mr. George just recanted them, he, or he just recited them. Honor, duty, integrity, courage, discipline, and compassion. You're about to embark on an exciting and noble career, and we are honored to have been a part of your future success. All of the family members, or to all the family members and friends of the recruits gathered here today, thank you for your patience, understanding, and support of these men and women. While today we are here to honor all of our graduates, 
As we move on in our program, the first thing we'd like to do is briefly recognize the special achievements of individual recruits for Academy Class 125. I'd like to again invite our Academy Coordinator, Ken George, back to the podium to present special achievements. Thank you very much. I want to invite uh, Bruce Blair and Jay Connor up this way, because our first award is for the Class Valedictorian, which is sponsored by the California Central Coast Cops and Kids. The valedictorian for Class 125 has been selected by a process of overall outstanding achievement in five subject matters, which is firearms, scenarios, academics, physical fitness, and report writing. Each is awarded points, and the one with the top uh, score gets that, and it was a tight race for the top four. And a check in the award for Class 125 for the Class Valedictorian is Deputy Dylan Smiley, San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Office. And a few words by Deputy Smiley. Good morning, everyone. I would like to thank you all for being here today for the celebration and accomplishments of Allen Hancock College Law Enforcement Academy Class 125. We are truly honored to have you here. When it was announced that I was valedictorian, I was in disbelief. I couldn't believe I was selected because this class is full of many talented individuals. Our competitive nature as a class pushed all of us towards success. You see us here today because of a lot of hard work, dedication, and a healthy dose of competition. You may have your preconceived notions of why I was selected as valedictorian, but the truth is, any one of us could be standing at this podium today. The people you see sitting in these bleachers are some of the smartest, kindest, and well-rounded people I've ever met. Now that I've mentioned my fellow recruits, let me tell you about Class 125. Class 125 is a very diverse group. We have a former National Football League player, a former Major League Soccer player, a professional mixed martial arts fighter, two former police officers with 16 years of combined experience, nine former correctional officers, nine veterans with five in the Army, three in the Marines, and one in the Air Force, two EMTs, a total of 16 bachelor's degrees, three master's degrees, and a recruit that speaks seven languages. We come from all walks of life, and that's what makes us unique. Our collective experiences leading up to the Academy have been shared with each other and has helped us grow immensely. The story of Class 125 began on January 9th, 2023, during one of the biggest rainstorms in recent years. Class 125 began with 34 recruits, most of us ready to overcome whatever obstacle was put in front of us. Our first day began in this weight room located behind me. That day consisted of a lot of running, recruits missing parts of their suits, I'll let you imagine what that looked like, and the introduction of academy life. After getting all the first day nerves out, we were told that class was canceled on the second day due to the rainstorm. This left us all very confused and even more nervous than before. This was a great indicator of what a career in law enforcement will be like. Expect the unexpected. After getting through the first week, the academy became a fast paced blur. We heard tales of the legendary Senior Sergeant Langhennig, who was unable to be at the academy for about the first month. We started to think that senior wasn't even real and was just a scary story that previous classes told to keep the next classes on edge. Mr. George and Mr. Hamill would always tell us to get it together before the senior gets here. 
We all speculated until one day it became very apparent that seniors was indeed very real. We were standing in formation right here on the grinder when we all figured out who senior was just by his voice. Deputy Woodward was interrogating our class sergeant at the time about where his radio was. As the class sergeant was answering, we heard, sounds like an excuse, hit the bell. As the saying goes, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. Just as we were learning how Deputy Woodward operated, Senior Sergeant Langhennig blew up our world. We had to come together as a class and develop solutions to the everyday conflict we were experiencing in the academy. We had to learn how to adapt and overcome. As we all learn quickly, this is a team-oriented profession. The academy is designed this way because we are entering a career where people will be depending on us and we will be depending on each other. The bond that we have all developed through the extreme highs and lows of the academy is unlike anything I have ever experienced. Our resilience as a class was constantly tested throughout the academy. From getting pepper sprayed during a rainstorm and marching back to the academy from the range while the rain was reactivating our exposure to the pepper spray, to going through seniors punishing workouts that resulted from complacency. I wouldn't have done it with any other group of people. As Mr. George always said, the academy does not get easier, you just get better. We will constantly be tested throughout our careers in law enforcement. Resiliency and strength will play a key factor in the longevity of our careers. On behalf of Class 125, I'd like to thank the academy staff. To all of the instructors that came in to teach our learning domains, thank you for passing your knowledge on to us. I could tell that each and every one of the instructors cared about the future of law enforcement and preparing us to navigate the career. Each instructor brought their own style of teaching that always kept the class engaged. Senior Sergeant Langhennig, thank you for the discipline that you instilled in us. Senior constantly reminded us to never get complacent in any aspect of life because as none of us will ever forget, complacency kills. Senior always let us choose which version of them we would get and those were the three M's. The mentor, the motivator, or the monster and we got to experience all three. I'd say the mentor was my favorite version of senior for obvious reasons. Deputy Woodward, thank you for preparing us for everything we encountered in the academy. You truly were the foundation of our success, and we are grateful for the lessons you taught us. I know that half of us were very surprised to see you on our first day at the academy for a multitude of reasons. Mr. Hamill, with two M's, I say that because I had to handwrite his name 100 times for spelling it incorrectly. We are honored to be your first class as an academy coordinator. We, tr we all truly believe you will be the perfect coordinator for class 126 and the classes to come. Mrs. Martinez, thank you for always being there to answer our questions about the academy. You gave us an environment during your classes where we could be ourselves. Mr. George, thank you for always being there to give us advice and knowledge. You always had a solution for our problems and a true talent to motivate us when we were down. Your talks after our physical fitness sessions gave us food for thought, improved our moral compasses, and brought us closer as a class. I hope we were a good class to end on because the next classes truly won't know what they are missing. You have taught us invaluable lessons that we will carry for the rest of our lives. Enjoy retirement, Mr. George. And I'd like to thank my mentor throughout this academy, Deputy Ortega. He was always available to talk when I had questions or just to talk about how to navigate the academy life. I attribute a lot of my success in this academy to the mindset he gave me. To my family, thank you for helping Kaylee take care of our daughters whenever she needed help. This couldn't have been possible without you. Thank you to all the other families that helped to recruit throughout this academy. And to my wife, who probably had a harder job than I did, thank you for making these last six months less stressful than they could have been. I'm sure there are a lot of struggles that you went through that I don't know about. You were not only an amazing mother to our daughters, but you took on my duties as a father during the academy. I am so grateful and proud of you. We are stronger because of this. To all the other wives out there, especially with kids, thank you for supporting us. I know it was a difficult time. To my daughters, Rennie and Frankie, daddy's coming home. And to class 125, stay resilient, stay strong, and remember, complacency kills. Thank you.
Okay, we're going to give out a few more awards, and I'm going to give you time when you hear your favorite rec uh, officer or deputy's name call, we'll give you time to come up here and get a picture, and for the chief or sheriff to come up and join as well. So the first award we're going to give out is the Leadership Award. I want to invite uh, Sergeant Nicole Taylor of the Morro Bay Police Department to present this award. This award was selected by the uh, fellow recruits. They, get, they pick this one. And the recipient will give you a, a, a gift from the Morro Bay Police Officer Association. And for Class 125, the recipient for leadership is Officer Chad Crawford, San Luis Obispo Police Department. All right, this next award, Nicole's gonna stay here because she's representing CAPTO, which is the California Association of Police Training Officers, and they give the award for the Academic Award. And this is the award given to the recruit with the highest score of grades when in our testing and quizzes. And Hancock continues to be, we're number two in the state of California when it comes to academics. There's somebody that's still holding on to that number one spot they dropped out years ago, but they won't get rid of that spot they hold. So it's it's about 0.07%. So you guys are still number one in my book. In my book. So the recipient for the academic award for class 125 is a deputy, Aaron Hinkle, San Luis Obispo Sheriff's Office. The Hinkle family picked a good seat, didn't you? And you never knew this, did you? Surprise, okay. Surprise to them also. Okay, the next award is the Lee Horn Memorial Award, and I wanna invite Lieutenant Schaefer from the San Luis Obispo Police Officers. Uh, he's actually from the Police Officer Management Association, but they team up with the Police Officer Association to give the award to the most improved recruit. Uh, the Lee Horn was established uh, by this agency after one of their officers. And the most improved rec recruit for class 125 who gets the Lee Horn Award is a deputy, Christian Cole, Santa Barbara Sheriff's Office. Okay, our next award is the Leo Ortega Award. If you don't know Leo Ortega from the San Luis Sheriff's Office, you know why the most inspirational award is named after him. I want to invite uh, Sergeant Taylor Yates of the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's uh, Office Association to present this award. On page seven in your program, there's more information on these awards, and to save time, you can read that on your own. Uh, the recipient for the Leo Ortega Most Inspirational for Class 125 Deputy Michael Horton, Santa Barbara Sheriff's Office. So a lot of tan and green in that picture. Our next award, I want to invite uh, Bruce Blair and Jay Connor up again. 
The Cops and Kids Award is a scholarship given to each class by the California or the Central Coast California Cops and Kids Association. They are a big supporter of law enforcement. They've been doing this award for quite some time and is a big write-up in your program on that. I uh, want you to go ahead and read that as well. Uh, the recipient for the International or the uh, Cops and Kids Award for Class 125 is another deputy from the Sheriff's Department of Santa Barbara County, Michael Tapia Chavez. I'm going to push Ken away, aside here for a second because Cops and Kids have been a great supporter of our program. And with us today, uh, Jay Connor has a special award, a special gift for Ken. He's going to say a few words about Ken and their relationship with our academy. Thank you. I think from the uh, keynote speech today, you can realize uh, Ken's career and value not only to the law enforcement community, to all as aspects of every community, the family and everything. And Ken, it's been mine and our ple pleasure to be involved with you through the transition of the years. Uh, many of you see this beautiful facility, and it is beautiful. Uh, you see us out here giving coffee and donuts. It's never always been this way. And we appreciate Ken's involvement and working with Ken in the transition from the old academy, the, the, the old chapel where we used to have the graduation and everything. Uh, and on behalf of the... Uh, you know, the cops and kids, which was footprinters at one time, uh, the transition to where we are now and the, the support you've allowed us not only to continue with the scholarship that at one time was $250, is now $750. we have also picked up the valedictorian again, uh, and it's an honor for our, our organization to be part of it. So we'd like to present you this, just a gift card for uh, dinner for you and your wife to enjoy your favorite restaurant or one of them at Rose's. And we can't thank you enough, Ken, and wish you the best forever. Godspeed. Track, and I'm going to be behind schedule now. Uh, thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Jay. Been great supporters over the years, and I know it's going to continue. Our next award is the Physical Fitness Award presented by the Santa Maria Police Officers Association, and I want uh, Officer Ken Mize will come up to help present that award. I remember back in academy, he called me old man, and that was what, six, seven years ago? Nine. Almost nine? You were in my first classes, weren't you? Yep. <sighs> You're getting to be an old man. <laughs> Look at you. All right. This award is given to the recruit with the highest level of physical fitness throughout the academy. And it is physical demanding, and, but the recipient for class 125, <laughs> this one's all blue, by the way, no deputies in this one. Uh, Officer Randy Mendoza, Santa Maria Police Department. The next award is the Firearms Award, and I want Sergeant Abbas from the San Luis Obispo County DSA to help present this award. This award is given to the recruit with the highest scores in firearms uh, proficiency, and actually this recruit wound up having a perfect score when all the uh, qualification rounds, so it didn't, didn't miss a round. Uh, different deputy, though. Uh, deputy from San Luis, Santa Barbara, Sheriff's Office, Anthony Blanco.
Our next re next award is for the report running award. I want uh, Deputy uh, DA from Santa Barbara County, John Severnock, to come up to present the award. And this is the recruit with the best scores in report writing. And of course, a district attorney knows how important the reports are, especially when you go to court. Uh, the recipient for this award for Class 125 is Deputy J.T. Wells, Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Office. Sheriff Brown, don't go too far. You got to come back anyway, so just stay hang around. Um, the next award is for the scenario script or the scenario award. Uh, Chief Martinez from the Rio Grande Police Department will present this award, and the recruits are tested on 13 critical scenarios. And the recruit with the highest score in Class 125, Deputy Anthony Blanco, Santa Barbara Sheriff's Office. Our next award is the Emergency Vehicle Operations Award, and Mr. Hamill will come up and present the award, because it usually is uh, Brad Ellickson but, from Sunset Auto, but he moved to Georgia last week, and all of a sudden he's gone. So you you work for Sunset Auto now, too? Maybe so. We go to page 9 on your program for more information. It might be on page 9. I may have moved because we added a page in the program. Uh, but this is given to the recruit with the best driving skills throughout the academy. So we, we watch them all around, and then at the end, when we do the final driving, the EVOC instructors get to pick the recipient. Uh, Class 125, the safe driver is presented to Deputy Tyler Gray, San Luis Sheriff's Office. And finally, before we do our certificates, is the Archon or Defensive Tactics Award. And again, information on this is in the program. This award is given by the Santa Maria Elks Lodge 1538. And uh, Mr. Brown should be coming up to help present the award. And this is for the recruit with the best tactics and uh, best tactics when it comes to defensive tactics. And the recipient for class 125 is Deputy Isaiah Hughes, San Luis Sheriff's Office. So Deputy Hughes, Deputy Hughes was the uh, MMA professional. Uh, Deputy Gr uh, Gray was the Miami Dolphins, right? NFL. And our PT award, of course, went to the professional soccer player, uh, Officer Mendoza. So take those skills and use them here. So Now we've reached the moment you've been waiting for to get your certificate so you can go home and have lunch. Class Sergeant, prepare the class to receive their certificates.
Our first recipient is an independent recruit, and President Walters will present his certificate. Recruit Rob Lee Nival II. Sometimes, all right. <laughs> Our next graduate for Class 125 is sponsored by the Atascadero Police Department. Uh, Chief Allen will present the certificate. <laughs> Officer Julio Leva. Our next graduate for 125, sponsored by the Paso Robles Police Department, and Chief Nord will present his certificate. Chief Nord, there he is, okay. Officer Michael Hernandez. Our next graduates for Class 125 are sponsored by the San Luis Obispo Police Department, and Chief Scott will present those certificates. Officer Jordan Aris. Officer Chad Crawford. Our next six graduates from 125 are sponsored by the San Luis Obispo Sheriff's Office, and Sheriff Parkinson will present those certificates. First one is Deputy Tyler Gray. Deputy David Harmon.
Deputy Aaron Hinkle. Deputy Isaiah Hughes. <laughs> Deputy Mario Morales. Deputy Dylan Smiley. Okay, our next 13 graduates from Class 125 are sponsored by the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Office, and Sheriff Brown will present their certificates. I think there's uh, almost more than some agencies around here. Okay, first one, Deputy Anthony Blanco. Deputy Vicente Cancino. Deputy Christian Cole. You draw quite a crowd there, Cole. All right. Deputy Brett Gregory. <laughs> Deputy Michael Horton. Deputy Elena Kleemeyer. <laughs> Deputy 
Deputy Christian Mejia Paz. Deputy Tony Ochoa Castaneda. <laughs> Deputy Robert Santana. Deputy Michael Tapia Chavez. Deputy Elmer Vences. Deputy J.T. Wells. And Deputy Frederick Isabrands. All right, Sheriff, you're done. You got them. All right. Our next graduates for Class 125 are sponsored by the Santa Maria Police Department, and Chief Schneider will present their certificates. Officer Justin Chacon. Officer Matthew Diaz. <laughs> Officer Randy Mendoza. And Officer David Villavicencio.
And our final graduate from Class 125, sponsored by the University of California Santa Barbara Police Department, Chief Yao, will present Officer Germain Valdez. Hurry up. Okay. As Officer Valdez makes his way around, I'm going to ask Mr. Woodham to step to the front of the podium for a gift from the class. And I want recruits Nivold and Hinkle to come up and present the class plaque on behalf of Class 125. And now, Senior Sergeant. Stop. Move As aside. you were. As you were. Move aside, please. <laughs> I'm interrupting Ken for just a moment here because in his bio, I, I had, Ken has worked here since 1989. That's 49 years, or I'm sorry, 34 years at Hancock College. I gave you a little extra there. <laughs> He's impressed by my math skills. So at this time, I would like to invite Coordinator Hamill and Deputy Harmon forward for a special presentation to Mr. George for his years of dedication and outstanding performance as the Academy Coordinator, Instructor, and uh, his years in law enforcement. Uh, Ken, come up, step forward, please. This is a presentation on behalf of Class 125 to Ken George. Thanking you for your years of service to our community, to this academy, and to uh, law enforcement and, and training. Got to catch a flight to meet my wife in Tennessee, but that won't fit on any luggage, so I'll go plan for that one. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been a blessing to end with Class 125. You guys have been a real blessing. Thank you very much. And now, Senior Sergeant Langenhanning will come and lead the class in the Code of Ethics and the Oath. Good work, class. Uh, feel free to turn to page six on your program and refer to the Law Enforcement Code of Ethics. The Law Enforcement Code of Ethics was introduced in the International Association of Chiefs of Police and was codified in California law as an official oath as a professional law enforcement officer. Please feel free to read along as Class 125 recites this code verbatim. Class 125, Ethics, shut Prepare to recite the Law Enforcement Code of Ethics. Ready? Begin. As a law enforcement officer, my fundamental duty is to serve, to safeguard lives and property, to protect the innocent against deception, the weak against oppression or intimidation, and the peaceful against violence or disorder, and to respect the constitutional rights of all, to liberty, equality, and justice. I will keep my private life unsullied solely as an example to all, Maintain courageous calm in the face of danger, scorn, or ridicule. Develop self-restraint and be constantly mindful of the welfare of others. Honest in thought and deed in both my personal and official life, I will be exemplary in obeying the laws of the land and regulations of my department. 
whatever I see or hear of a confidential nature or that is confided to me in my official capacity will be kept ever secret unless revelation is necessary in the performance of my duty. I will never act officiously or permit personal feelings, prejudices, animosities, or friendships to influence my decisions. With no compromise for crime and with relentless prosecution of criminals, I will enforce the law courteously and appropriately, without fear or favor, malice or ill will, never employing unnecessary force or violence, and never accepting gratuity. I recognize the badge of my office as a symbol of public faith, and I accept it as a public trust to be held so long as I am true to the ethics of the police service. I will constantly strive to achieve these objectives and ideals, dedicating myself before God to my chosen profession, law enforcement! Hoorah! Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our graduation ceremony. Thank you for all attending.